You are tuned in to another edition of Americana Music Profiles, brought to you by Americana Rhythm Music Magazine and AmericanaMusicMagazine.com. I'm your host, Greg Tutwiler. Let's jump right in to the next exciting interview. Charlie and Sterling Gorman are from a little village near Glasgow. When they were young, their fledging band, Murmur, caught the attention of Warner Brothers. The young band thought they had hit it big. It didn't quite pan out that way, and they returned home to lead a, quote, normal life. In their later years, the two have rediscovered their love of music and joy of working together, and their new band, King of Birds, and their new record, Eve of Destruction, are the topic of my conversation with them on this new edition of Americana Music Profiles. So I'm talking to Charlie and Sterling all the way in Glasgow from Virginia in the United States. Welcome, guys. Thanks, Greg. Welcome to you. And do I hi, have... Greg. Hi, Yeah, hi. Hey, and, and do I have it right that, the, um, that you guys are calling yourself King of Birds? Is that the name of the group? Yes, it is. Yeah, cool. Um, so I, I was looking through some of the uh, the notes that uh, were, were sent over, and it, it seems like you guys kind of had a had an early run at music, and and um, things didn't go exactly as planned, and and had to pause and start over. Is that right? Can you can you give me some some background to that story? Sure. Uh, we played in a, a band called Murmur. Uh, back in the, the early 90s um, and we got a deal with uh, Warner Brothers in America Okay. Uh, so we came over to Austin in Texas uh, we spent about three months there and we recorded an album Yeah. Uh, which was released uh, in 1994 uh, and then, unfortunately, shortly after that release, we returned back to the UK, Greg, and the band, uh, shortly after, sort of broke up. So we never really got a, a kind of run at it. We, we okay. recorded that album. That album is still available. Uh, but if that was the band the, the, the you know? So you never actually got a chance to... to let the record get get momentum and and tour the states with it even that's that's correct we, we the record company had actually organized for us to do a, a sort of tour of the radio stations i think there's a sort of delta pass you can get and do the 50 odd radio station uh-huh. uh, tour and that lined up for us to do uh but unfortunately it just kind of fell to bits at that at the wrong time, you know. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> it was really unfortunate, uh, and we we really just left music for quite a while, you know. Oh, totally. So, uh, so neither one of you you played much after that for a while. No, we didn't. We didn't. We just went and did our own, our own, you know, living our lives, and then. Uh, it was maybe three, four years ago we we really kind of got together and started thinking about maybe trying to write. So the initial idea, Greg, to be honest, was writing songs uh, for a publisher, okay, so that we could actually pass them on to other artists and right. get other, other artists to record. Uh, so we were really just looking at ourselves as writers, even in the beginning, uh, but. Yeah, right from the beginning, that yeah. was the intention. It was never an intention to become artists in uh-huh. our own right. Right. Uh, but the reaction and the feedback we got from people was, you know, just really pursue this and finish what you record and, and actually consider doing it as an album. Yeah. You know, so that was really how it came about. Okay. Uh, because the recordings that we had done, you know, we were really pleased with the recordings. Uh, and as it's turned out, consequentially, the album, it just sounds, it sounds like a fully formed album that yeah. was meant to be an album from the start, you know? Uh-huh. How old were you guys That's when... really the... Yeah. How old were you guys when you did that? Uh, mid, I think mid-twenties. Okay. When that was, when the summer was going, 
Yeah. And were you all, um, what, what got you started uh, younger than that? Were you, uh, did you grow up in a musical family? Was it, uh, you know, uh, school days music? What what prompted you guys to get into music in the first place? Hi, Greg, coming here. Um, I suppose where we were from, um, it was a little village in Eldersley. Uh, all our friends, you know, were musicians from early age, from, you know, the age of, sort of early teens. Um, so we're surrounded by friends. They're normally <clears throat> maybe your friends would be playing sports. Um, other friends are all either playing the drums or playing the guitars or yeah. want to be singers. And um, so we were just in a group of guys that were all yeah. in music. Yeah. We all kind of related to each other's musical taste. Um, so through you know, our younger years, um, we were always kind of involved in bands Charlie and myself sometimes together in bands and other times, uh, you know, apart playing in, in separate bands, you know. Um, and as Charlie said, you know, the murmur thing happened in the early 90s and then sort of fizzled out uh, around about 96, I think, it sort of finally was over. Uh, and then we sort of, as Charlie said, you know, maybe three years ago, we would, uh, Charlie had got some songs and I sort of said to myself, I'd like to hear them, and they were fantastic. Um, and that sort of got the ball rolling for, for King of Birds. Yeah, yeah. So were these songs that you had been just kind of writing uh, through the years when you're uh, when the band was off, or did you intentionally sit down and say, look, I want to I try to write again? The, the latter. Um, yeah. You know, I think we had individually sort of in our separate lives had sort of kept their hand in, if you like, sort of writing songs or playing. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was uh, sort of after Charlie had sort of came to me with these songs, I think it was three songs in a demo he, he sent me over uh, that were excellent, really good. And that sort of gave me the impetus to sort of try harder to, to write better as well. And, yeah. and that's when we sort of decided we would try and you know, have a concerted effort to, to put some songs together to to, uh, to sell on, um, which, as Charlie said, screwed into this Eve of Destruction album. You know. And when did that come out? That, that's out now, right? You, you guys released it. No, it's it's. Uh, no, it's sorry, Greg, sorry, Charlie. Charlie uh, uh, yeah. Um, the album hasn't been released yet. Okay. Um, it's been released uh, on the 26th of September. Okay. Uh, so we've just put a couple of songs out from ah, the album so uh, far. Okay. So those are the and cuts that I heard, just the singles that are out then. Yeah. Yes. And uh, we're intending to do another two songs. Uh, and the, the, the fourth, as I say, the fourth release will be in conjunction with the release of the album. Um, and that should be around about, you know, latter part of September, 26. And this will be a full-length record? Yeah, it's a 12-song album. Okay. What's the intention then once that comes out? Are, are you guys you're still holding down some sort of other career or... or are you envisioning this as getting back together, trying to make another run at it with a band? It's really dependent on how, how well it does. Um, we, we, we are currently working sort of outside music to sort of pay the bills at the moment. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, the ideal scenario would be that uh, the album is picked up and the, uh, you know, we could we could live off the album. You know, that's the, the dreams that are hopefully will become reality. You know, so it really depends on how how things go with the album. Yeah, is this going to be strictly a UK release, or will it also be released in the United States? Again, Greg, that's dependent on um, distributors. Uh, at the moment, we are uh, sort of looking for distribution. Sure. Okay. Uh, so with nothing, nothing tied down yet. Uh, so that would depend on uh, 
you know, the physical release would be dependent on distribution, but certainly uh, digitally it will be released worldwide on sort of your usual platforms, right. iTunes, Spotify, you know. But physical release of the albums uh, available uh, on vinyl and CD and subsequently on digital globally. Um, so, yeah, okay. And the feel, at least of the first couple cuts that, that I was able to listen to, um, the, the one in particular, um, uh, Hard Times for a Good Man, um, that a, has a very distinctive, it's, it feels sort of like American alternative country. Uh, was that the intention or or was it just the end result of what you got when you got done? Uh, I think we, I think from the very start, this is Charlie here, Greg, uh, I think from the very start, uh, we really wanted to, we became huge fans of country music when we were in America yeah. with the band. Okay. Back those years ago, we were living in Austin and Texas. Sure, good place, which yeah. is a real hub of country music. Right, right. And every night we were out watching bands. The stand of the bands was just off the charts, yeah. you know. Yeah. And uh, it it really just gave us both a, a real love of country music. Uh, and coincidentally, one of our relations, one of our family relations, is uh, one of the top pedal steel guitar players uh, and he got really closely involved right from the start with us okay so we did I suppose we did have that sort of edge of country in the, in the tracks anyway with with the ones that we were leaning towards with pedal steel uh -huh. um, so it, it did give that give it that sort of Americana feel if you like yeah Um and you know we we loved the the sound. We, we, it was done in a very sort of well, you know we think it was done in a very sort of, uh, you know it was just it was very measured in the in the approach of the the, the, the you know, structures of the song and uh -huh. the use of the pedal steel and stuff. Right. But um, no, we're really really pleased with the results. You know, uh, and that song does come across it's, it's just got a kind of sparkle to it you know it, just, it does yeah it really does have a you know um so but no i to totally agree it's got a very kind of alternative country feel to it uh -huh. yeah i really like the tune are you guys getting a chance to play currently uh are you playing out with with the songs that are on this record what does it look like for you currently to, to be performing as a musician in your and where you are uh, there, there are um, there are two things of Sterling here, Greg. Um, where we're from, uh, it's just outside Glasgow, uh, which is the biggest city in Scotland. Uh, and there is quite a sort of music scene there, diverse. There's, it's not like a city which is sort of predominantly, predominantly known for a particular genre of music. There's right. all it's a mix, mixing bowl of uh, you know one night you can go out and it's punk. The next night will be independent. The next night will be country. So, so um, you know, there's particular nights you can play uh, that you'll sort of get your own audience. Um, but we don't play that much, to be honest. Um, we're sort of just uh, putting out the singles and sort of trying to raise a profile at the moment. We've done a few support slots uh, with sort of named artists locally to, to Scotland. Um, which has sort of got some new fans and uh, you know once the record's out hopefully that will open doors for for more shows mm -hmm. you know? yeah is, is that are you are you looking or, or hoping to be able to put a band together and hit the road with it or are you still kind of of the mindset that you'd like to sell these songs to, to different artists I know I think we're you know we're now for partners, uh, you know, we've put a name on it, uh, and you know, we are we are going to go out as us 
Um, we do have a band, as Charlie said, we've got J.B. Holland, 